Hello and welcome to the Road to World Baseball Show. I'm your host, Eric Smolski, joined, as always, by my co-host, Scott Pianowski, and a special guest on the first playoff episode of the 2024 Road to World Baseball Show, Vaughn Dalzell. Um, Vaughn, listen, we're going to talk about it today, but you came on the betting show at the beginning of the season. I don't know if we had a time machine. People should have gone back and listened to a lot of things you said. So hopefully uh, we're going to get some good tidbits from you today as well. Yeah, I mean, I hope so. Uh, and yeah, I appreciate you guys having me here. It's It was a, a long, long MLB season, as it always yes. is. But uh, we learned a lot about a lot of teams and players. And yeah, I think we did pretty well in the futures market. Still waiting for, you know, the Otani and Judge MVP to be announced so we could win those. And, uh, you know, hopefully Paul Skeens and Luis Gill, too. But uh, yeah, the MLB playoffs off to a pretty good start, too, I'd have to say. Yeah, we are uh, we are going to dive into all of that today. Um, the focus, obviously, is on the playoffs. The focus is going to be uh, split between betting and just our general thoughts on the matchups and who's going to come out. So we're going to go over a little bit of the game that happened last night. We're going to talk about the AL, the four teams remaining, uh, the NL, four teams remaining, some bets that we like both in the division series as in the wild, in the World Series. Vaughn's going to talk to you about you know a lot of different ways that you can bet on the World Series. Um, but before we get into all the things that are going to come. Scott, there was a lot of hand-wringing about the format and, oh, there's, you know, so many sweeps and, you know, all these de- these series that are decided in two games. But what a hell of a game three last night, huh? Yeah, that was the, you know, that just made the whole playoffs you know, validated and justified. I... I my preferred format would be fewer teams. That's never going to happen in any professional mm-hmm. sport. That is toothpaste that is never going back in the tube. But you know, the most exciting thing in sports is lead changes. We saw mm-hmm. that in the the Mets Braves game, yeah. that first game on Monday, which was one of maybe the best game of the regular season. And then we just had like I'm excited for what's to come. But that that Alonso comeback, Mets comeback, may go down as the most exciting game of the entire playoffs. It's it's an all timer. It's um depending on how you view the Bobby Thompson home run, it was you know maybe the most dramatic home run in playoff history, depending on what your mm-hmm. parameters are set at. You know, there's a lot of contention for that. Obviously what the Yankees did with the Diamondbacks in 2001 was pretty great. Kirk Gibson, Reggie Jackson. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff like that you can compare it to, but it's just one of those nights you were just glad you're going to remember where you were when Pete Alonso hit that home run. And, um, you know, now we have a lot of matchups that are exciting, although I'm getting a little bit nervous. My goal of the entire playoffs is to get the Yankees eliminated. I hope somebody in the AL Central can do it. Um, you know, Baltimore, you know, did not hang around long for their proceedings. But, yeah, you know, it's it's frustrating when a game, when we don't get the rubber mad. Now, a lot of people mm-hmm. like that coin flip game because it's, yeah. it's immediately it's a rubber game. It's, it's all the chips are in the middle of the table. And so it's a little bit frustrating to see three of the series get ended on game two you lack some of that drama but you know that, that's all for that's all forgiven because of what the Mets and Brewers gave us on Thursday mm-hmm. night yeah listen I mean uh D- our our very own DJ short who I'm mm-hmm. sure was going through the roller coaster of emotions oh, yesterday uh retweeted um a tweet last night that mentioned that uh Pete Alonzo is the first player all time all time to hit a go-ahead home run in the ninth inning or later of a winner-take-all postseason game while his team was trailing. So he made that comment at the end, like, this is what you dream about in the backyard. That means Mm -hmm. literally no player in baseball history in a deciding playoff game in the ninth inning or extra innings has ever hit a go-ahead home run with their team trailing and then Alonzo just did it. And that's, a, I know it's like a lot, it's, it seems like word salad. That's like a lot of words to say. Mm-hmm. But if you just think about contextually that that has never happened, it's wild. And that Hard is the epitome. Like that is the moment you, that is the moment you dream about. I mean, obviously, when you dream about it, it's probably World Series game seven, not wild card game three, but whatever. I mean, that moment is, is pretty incredible. Um, and it was awesome to, to all be able to witness that. I don't mean it all to rain on the moment, but they really should count that Bobby Thompson home run in 1951. I guess they don't view that as a playoff series. It was a th- two teams were tied for the National League pennant and mm-hmm. they played a three game playoff and Thompson hit the, the famous shot heard around the heard world. Around the Giants the world. win the pennant. The Giants win the pennant. It predates all of us, of course, but I guess they don't call that a, a playoff series for some reason. I don't really understand that. They folded it into the regular season, but yeah, anytime 
you see history, right? I mean, we saw Kirk Cousins throw for 500 yards on Thursday night. That was, it's only happened like 25, 26 times in the NFL. So that's history. Pete Alonso does something under the parameters you mentioned, never happened before in baseball. That's history. And, and one of the charms of baseball, they always say that you go to a baseball game, you'll see something you've never seen before. Well, we mm-hmm. literally saw something that, you know, under mm-hmm. these, under this context, we've never seen before. And it's, it's just it's an adrenaline shot, right? I mean, Devin Williams is on the short list of the best closers in baseball. Yeah, you know, he's mm-hmm. just, he's really specifically hard against right-handed pitching. He's at home. He's come back from his injury and had a great season. He's one of those guys. If you stashed, he was a godsend for fantasy managers in the last quarter of the season. Somebody I have in a keeper league. I'm excited. I just hope there's no scar tissue. And uh, sad, sad to call the Brewer season because you know. They, yeah. they outkicked their coverage. They yeah. everything changed. GM was gone. Manager was gone. Burns was gone. They even lost Yelich in the middle of the season. Didn't matter. Um, they were the best team in the NL Central all year. Pretty much ran away with that division. But yeah, I'm still on a high from the Alonso home run. I, don't, I have no affection for the Mets. You know, I'm neutral to them. Yeah. I don't hate them. I don't love them. Um, you know how I feel about the Yankees. But uh, you know, all baseball fans win on an if you're a brewer fan i feel for you it's a horrible way to lose and now they've lost in the first round of the playoffs a bunch of years in a row but other than that yeah everybody else wins yeah. do you I see it pick- so far go for it Bob. i, I want to piggyback off what scott said because you were saying um you know you go to a baseball game hoping to see something you've never seen before and i feel like in baseball we were arguing whether or not this what the sport needed a few years ago how to make the sport more fun uh, make it quicker. And I think this year we've really seen that. Like I've gone to multiple games myself, seeing guys like Paul Skeens, Ellie De La Cruz, Shohei mm-hmm. Otani. And I'm seeing things that haven't been done before. Guys throwing at speeds that haven't been thrown, guys getting to bases or hitting balls. O'Neill Cruz, for example, too. Another guy, hardest hit rates. Like we're seeing things that have not been done before and that are impressive. So I think baseball honestly is in a really good spot. And that Mets Braves regular season finale uh, was just a phenomenal way to kickstart us into the postseason, yeah. for example. Yeah, it'd be even better if they didn't schedule every single one of their playoff games on Saturday afternoon across from college football. You know, if they were like, hey, let's get some games on Friday night when nothing is going on. But um, did you see, Scott, you were talking about the Brewers. Did you see um, this stat made it out last night? Um, I don't know where it originated, but every single team, that has eliminated the Brewers in the postseason has made the World Series yeah. that year, dating back to 1981. Every single team that eliminated the Brewers wound up making the World Series. So Vaughn, I don't know. We're going to get to the NL later. I don't know if that changes some of your your bets, maybe, but wow. that's uh, history on the side of the Mets. Yeah, um, I uh, don't believe that. That's insane. <laughs> um, we also the other big storyline before we get into just the the actual predictions and what's going to happen ahead when the Royals and the Tigers made the playoffs my social media timeline was filled with just people saying well look at their record against the White Sox if they didn't play the White Sox they wouldn't make the playoffs they're only in the playoffs because of the White Sox then both of them swept their wildcard series we have three AL Central teams among the last four teams so Vaughn were the White Sox terrible was just the is this just the greatest division that has ever <laughs> that ever that baseball has ever seen well i mean scott's the historian sounds i mean you're dropping <laughs> things that i haven't heard yet so i i can't sit here and say ever but i mean there's been a lot of really good divisions in baseball especially over the last five ten years so it's i do think chicago is pretty much that bad because <laughs> yes. when you when you look at the road schedule like the colorado rockies have only won six more road games than the white Sox, so it's the white Sox were that bad at home especially you know and that comes from when you sell everybody a lot of fan bases i mean coming from a pirates fan like we are very hard on when we get trade players do not go to the games now show management they should not have traded that player especially in the mccutcheons the coals of the world but i think the white Sox getting rid of everybody really made it hard for people to want to go to games and when you don't have anyone at games, it makes it really hard for the players to get up and play, especially when you're two, uh, Tuesday, 12.05, uh, you know, first pitch, for example. But I just really do think the White Sox were that bad, but they lost all of hope right away in the season. But I, I, for example, did not expect three AL Central teams to be in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. When we did this show, we talked a lot about the potential of the Tigers and the Guardians. We already knew the Royals would be good. So, I mean, we all had an idea that this division could be this good, but I think they lived up and surpassed a lot of people's expectations. 
And you you did have an idea the White Sox would be this bad, too. I mean, that was one of your bets on our, our preseason show, wasn't it, it? It had to be between them and the Rockies. We knew the Oakland A's were going to get better. Like, Scott was very avid on that. I remember, too, because I was like, I do think Oakland's going to be better uh, for sure. And then, you know, you watch them as the season goes on, and they're starting to beat really good teams early in the season. Mm-hmm. Um, and not to mention that finale in Oakland, the last game ever at that stadium. Oh, my God. That was as electric as it gets in baseball. Uh, but yeah, I think it was just between those two teams. I mean, you had to pick between Colorado and Chicago and next year we should think there should be a new team in the mix, but it's hard to imagine those two won't be at the bottom of MLB once again. Yeah, yes, exactly. I just had to do the over on NBC sports. We are going to go through every single team and do our, our 2024 recap. And, uh, we're starting at the bottom. And so I just put the Rockies one out this week. Um, and in the call, the paragraph of like what went right, it's a pretty short paragraph there's not a lot um and the like what needs to happen it's like literally just anything needs to happen that organization needs to do anything and i feel like the white Sox are in a similar boat like you know they're three years ago we thought they were primed for a run and then the guys didn't develop or they were traded and the farm system is barren except for like you know noah schultz who looks like he could be a really good pitcher um and yeah we don't have a lot of optimism so we might might get this three AL Central teams back in it again. Um, so we are going to go over all of our previews right now um, for the AL and NL. Vaughn will talk us through some of his favorite bets. Uh, but before we do that, this Sunday night, it's an interconference showdown. A Sunday night in week five, catch Dak Prescott and the Cowboys as they take on TJ Watt and the vaunted Steelers defense in Pittsburgh. Coverage kicks off at 7 p.m. Eastern time on NBC and Peacock. Uh, sadly, no Micah Parsons for that one. Um, it is, it's looking like with the ankle injury. Um, but you know, maybe that'll make the game a little bit more competitive. Uh, give Justin Fields a little bit more time to look downfield, uh, even though he's playing without three starting offensive linemen. So who really knows how this game's going to go? Um, but Vaughn, we're here to talk baseball before we get into just the, the series in particular, like, can you just explain the type of bets that people can be making? I mean, I think people know, you know, within an individual game what they can bet on, but mm-hmm. there's still enough time in the playoffs that people can be making other types of futures bets and things like that, correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot in the futures market right now. I mean, you can be betting on players solely to lead the playoffs and home runs, hits, stolen bases. You guys go to that angle, guys to be the MVPs of uh, AL, NL, or just the World Series in general. I mean, there's a lot of futures out there, but. If you go to the sports books, they'll have series player props um, and playoff um, most bet series props as well, which is guys that lead not only that series, but also lead the playoffs. So there's so many ways to bet it. But I think with that being said, you need to also just dial it down and focus in on what works for people or what doesn't work for the public in general. And, uh, you know, you guys are talking about the, the wild card format, too, and it's it's proven that we know what happens already. You know, the team that wins game one usually is going on to win game two, and that's how it's been. But when you look at moving on down the line of the postseason, you need to be fading pitchers. Um, I mean, I have a new segment coming. I won't spoil it here too much, but, uh, you know, I have a new segment I'm going to be doing for basketball season called Bus Stop Bets, okay? And um, when I my first try of the Bus Stop Bets was taking all eight pitchers on the first day of the playoffs to go under their strikeouts, it went 7-1. and one except when King for the Padres came out through 12 Ks. Come on, man. Uh, I was going to get a nice payday off five bucks, but you have to fade pitchers because they're not going as deep in the postseason. A lot of guys are making their first starts in a while in the playoffs or their first starts in general. So strikeouts and pitching out unders you can always get for plus 120, which means, you know, a $100 bet returns 120 or 220 in general because you're winning 120. So I always say that, and underdogs are far more profitable. Uh, than you would think. So don't be afraid to play underdogs in the postseason. Uh, favorites overall are a negative 37 and a half units over the last 108 ML play- playoff games if they've had at least seven more wins in the regular season, which is usually the case in baseball. This is the first year in a while I feel like we don't have a 100-win team. Mm-hmm. Uh, but So it's far more competitive, and I think that's why we see the AL Central uh, having three teams represented. But uh, you need to be playing unders on pitchers, and you need playing underdogs in general. You don't need to be scared of them. Even if a team is heavily favored, take a shot on a dog. And guy, people can still bet teams to advance to the World Series, win the World Series. All of those yeah. types of bets can are also still in play. And do you think that even though we're already into the postseason, do you think that there's still 
there's still value in those type of bets. Absolutely. And there's there's more value on those type of bets than teams themselves sometimes. I mean, if you're going to take a look at a team to uh, to win it all, for example, um, you know, I do like – I'm going to spoil a pick here. I do like the Phillies a lot. They're a preseason bet team I have, though, uh, in this market. So them at plus 450. Uh, someone that hasn't bet them already might think that's a great price, but you could also split up that same wager along Bryce Harper, um, you know, Kyle Schwarber, and Trey Young, for example, those three. And if you hit on their prices of which should be 12 to one, you know, 14 to one and Bryce Harper's probably eight to 10 to one at most places, you can make more money. Uh, so you could always find certain ways to approach the betting market too, uh, and try and figure out, is it better to be betting their best player uh, and splitting mm -hmm. it on a Francisco Lindor or Pete Alonso rather than just betting the Mets straight up, or is it better price to be betting these teams? So uh, most people betting the Yankees in the world series market are going to take Aaron judge or Juan Soto, which is right. what 99 Point nine percent. The outcome is likely to happen there. Sure. Um, you know, but, you're talking about as as MVP bets, correct? Yes, as MVP bets. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, thank you for clearing that up. But uh, yeah, so you can always try and you know figure out a way to make more money than just what the set price is. But it takes a little bit, you know, digger deeping, I think. But uh, you know, Yankees, Dodgers, those teams are pretty set in stone. Who would be better bets to take in the MVP market rather than taking them to win at face value? Remember something else too. If you've made preseason bets, right? Like I had an over bet on the Cubs, which came down to the last day of the regular season. And I looked at the lineups. It was a glorified spring training game. And I said, <laughs> you know, there's, there's, I'm just going to take half the money. I'm just going to hedge this game and yeah. you know, or, or roughly half. It wasn't maybe a, a exact 50, 50, but you know, if you have, if you did bet a world series matchup, you bet a champion and you don't feel good about it, or just, just examine what the odds are, just see what your options are. And maybe you make a dynamic decision in the middle of a series or in the middle of the playoffs. Oh, or you absolutely. hedge it too, right? If right. you have a preseason, like Vaughn was talking about, if you have a preseason bet for the Phillies, you know, to win the World Series, and they're they make the World Series and they're going up against the Yankees, you can put a bet on the Yankees to win the World Series at that time, and then yeah. you wind up winning, you know, some money at least, regardless of of who winds up taking the series. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll use this because this is going to be a great example. Hopefully, it's not an example that lives to be truthful, uh, but it may. Um, I will always, for the rest of my life, regret not hedging Paul Skeen's rookie of the year uh, if he does not win this year. And it's 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 a pretty fair case on Jackson Merrill for a lot of people. I'm not going to sit here and argue about it because I think Jackson Merrill is definitely deserving. But you know, someone who bet him at 40 to one, 33 to one, 25 to one, 20 to one, and continued betting him down to 10 to one, um, I never once hedged Jackson Merrill because I was like, Paul Skeen's is the for sure rookie of the year. And then bombs away, Jackson Merrill, ninth inning, he just hits as that streak. And he closes the gap. So you should always be looking at hedging just in case uh, something miraculous does happen because baseball, it only takes a week or two for everything to change. Eric and I had a long discussion that we didn't understand. What, uh, taking nothing away from Jackson Merrill, and it's, it's never been a better time to be named Jackson in Major League Baseball, but <laughs> we thought Skeens probably was you know, maybe the, the rookie of the year. And the fact that Merrill was the overwhelming favorite in the late season betting market, I guess because he's played a full season and Skeens hasn't, but man – with Skeens the ERA right. under two, I, I I would give it to Skeens or, or maybe at least to me that's that's a coin flip just like we think uh, Eric and I thought Bobby Witt and Aaron yeah. Judge was a discussion that's not going to be one. People are gonna say it's a matchup of the MVP contender. No, Judge is going to win. I mean the betting market is never that slanted the way it is now without it being right. So yeah, um, Vaughn, are you surprised that that Merrill is as big of a favorite as he is? I don't. Eric and I didn't think it made a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean it's it's the argument of he's an everyday positional player impacting his team where Paul Skeens can only do it once or twice a week. And I, I get that 100% because there are starts. I just lived in Pittsburgh for the past year. When we did this episode beginning of the year, I was actually in Pennsylvania. And my entire background looked completely different. I just moved somewhere. I moved to Connecticut a few weeks ago. But I went to so many Pirates games. And, uh, you know, Paul Skeens was absolutely electric. But right after that midseason break, the Pirates fell apart where the Padres surged. And as someone who went to six Pirates games in a row and watched them go 0-6, oh, I was about fed up with Paul Skeen's rookie of the year odds dropping. But I understood because when he did pitch, the bullpen slipped mm -hmm. away, lost him games. He should have more wins on his resume. But for what he was out there, I mean, he certainly was miraculous and arguably the best pitcher in the league at one point this season. Jackson Merrill, you never once said that he was the best player in all of baseball this year, but he was arguably one of the most impactful players in baseball for stretches of the year. And uh, the fact that the Padres have, you know, 20 or 30 more wins than the Pirates sells yeah. a lot of people right off the bat. Um, yeah. So I can't argue either way. If they were both named co-rookie of the years, 
I'd be 100% okay with that, to be honest with you. But uh, I'm not trying to take anything away from Jackson Merrill. I just think Paul Skeens was that fantastic as a rookie. Yeah, and Scott, you obviously mentioned that series between the Yankees and, and the Royals. And I think the when we had that conversation about Bobby Witt, the last few weeks of the season, Judge kind of like lengthened the or, or you know widened the gap a little bit. Um, this is the series right now. It's listen, whoever wins the series wins the MVP. Let's just agree. We'll move on. Um, <laughs> no, that's not, that's not how it works. Um, but this is the series actually that has the uh, the largest gap in terms of odds. The Yankees are the biggest favorite in this round of the playoffs, minus two hundred um, to win the series. They are the only team with that kind of odds. Uh, Scott, I know you were under on the Yankees um at the beginning of the season can you can you get the words out that the yankees will win this series or do you think that the royals are going to take this one yeah i i certainly hope the royals will i think the royals can and i, I like i love what i'm gonna say like i love what vaughn said earlier about just being having an underdog underdog mindset he talked about the favorites being terrible bets historically in recent history in, in baseball and there's a lot of reasons for that I and mean, people they think, okay, this team won more games. This team's quote unquote better. This team has whatever home field is worth. It's one extra home game, but in this round, but in, in the rest of the playoffs. But people are wired to take favorites. It's just the way people work. It's why people are always you know, betting like teases in the NFL. Oh, how do I get this team just to win the game? Mm -hmm. I only have to add one other team. What, what an easy bet that is. A tease has been a horrible bet, by the way, this year in the NFL season. But I think it's smart if my whole gambling ethos handicapping ethos is starting off on how can i get to the underdog what's the price on the underdog do i think that's offering value what the royals need to do to win this series their bullpen which was better in the second half of the year but overall i think it was the 20th and era and that's no bueno man you're gonna we know we're at a time even when you have good starters they don't pitch complete games you're hoping maybe you're quote unquote ace might go six or seven innings it may be cases where he goes five if the team works the pitch count up quickly you're going to have to have multiple guys come in and be effective and so if the royals win the series it's going to because be because their bullpen out kicked its coverage i absolutely agree with that i was going to say you know michael walker and one game one doesn't really entice a lot of mm -hmm. betters either you see garrick versus michael walker you're like oh i am taking the yankees right away um and, and i understand that they're the biggest favorites on the board as you said so Scott, you, you mentioned the parlay teaser piece. Everybody is going to pick their other favorite, they think, in the four-game slate mm -hmm. and parlay that with the Yankees on Saturday. So I 100% like the Royals uh, in game one. And there was a stat to a trend that's working to be possibly in our favor for an underdog there in that series because home favorites of minus 240 or higher on a run of 15-2. and two. Uh, So obviously those teams win. The Yankees aren't quite there yet. Uh, and if the Yankees don't get there, that definitely gives me more uh, distinction. I want to fade them too, but I think that series, it's just people love the Yankees. You know, people expect the Yankees to make it back to the world series. Um, you know, I asked my girlfriend, who do you think, who should I place a $5 bet on AL NL? Who's going to meet up? And she said, Yankees Mets. And I said, no, the world would burn. Uh, but I knew she was going to pick the Yankees. You know, everybody wants that. So Well, the world may not burn, but you know, Roger Clemens would pick up a broken baseball bat yeah. and throw it yeah. at Mike Piazza. We, we already had that experience. Nobody wants to go back there. If you want to bet on the Yankees, right, you have to find creative ways to do it. We see this in yes. regular season. You want to yeah. bet on a favorite, well, have them win by more than one run, stuff like that. If you want mm -hmm. to bet on the Yankees, I would encourage you to have them win in a shorter series. Have them sweep, have them win in four, and try to fight back against the juice a little bit. That's a great idea. And now, now, meanwhile, like I was just looking it up to see, okay, is there any way to bet on the Royals here? Like if you wanted to fade the Yankees to a certain extent, but you didn't think they're going to win the series, you know, right now, it's plus 160 for this game to go for the series to go five games to bet over 4.5 games on the series. We know we're going to get Waka first. Most likely, we're getting Reagans and Lugo after that. There's a strong chance that the Royals can win the two games with Cole Reagans yeah. and Seth Lugo pitching if they're pitching up to their potential. And so maybe you, your bet is this series goes five. Um, I, I kind of agree with Scott that I think. I think it's hard to say the Yankees aren't going to win this, but I could see this going to five. Scott, do you, uh, you want to hop in there with that? Cause I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm afraid the Yankees are going to win and I'm afraid they're going to win in three or four games. 
I don't know, man. I mean, I I'm maybe, maybe, maybe I just can't be emotionally neutral with the Yankees because they, they, yeah. <laughs> they frustrate me so much. And I think they've had a great run out because they didn't want the Orioles. I think the Orioles were a great matchup for them. And they didn't, I don't know what happened to Baltimore in that Royal series. It's two games, of course, but the Yankees got the run out and I, I'm all for the momentum of the Tigers. And I think the Royals are a fun team, but the Yankees got the, the first run out that they wanted, right? They got the yeah. two teams eliminated that they didn't want to play. Yeah, I'll ask you this quickly because my problem with the Yankees is obviously I like Garrett Cole. Carlos Rodon has been a really nice surprise, too. I think he really turned it up uh, this season at points for the Yankees. But Luis Gill making his first playoff start, Marcus Stroman getting the mix, like those are big advantages for the Royals, is it not? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that that's my thought. But I uh, again, I kind of agree with Scott. My heart says – the Yankees are going to win this in four games, but I, I there's a chance. And so if you felt the need to to gamble on something, but I, I think, you know, there's probably better bets elsewhere that Vaughn can, can hit on. Um, and I'm curious, Vaughn, if you are buying the continuation of the Tigers magic, um, it's pretty even odds here. They're just plus one Oh five to win the series. Uh, I'm curious if you, if yeah. you think that the Tigers are a good bet to win this series, or if you, you see another angle here. I mean, I, I like the Guardians. I think I like the Guardians bats. Uh, you know, I was trying to look at some fun ways for some players in case the Guardians do win this series. Uh, how can I back a player too? And I think like Lane Thomas, most stolen bases, or Jose Ramirez getting involved with those guys. Uh, home runs, obviously Ramirez if he's just bombs away in this series. But this one might be the one that goes lengthy um, because I think that it's it's very like you said the odds are plus one five for Detroit, so Cleveland would be essentially minus one fifteen probably. Um, they are, yeah. What minus on DraftKings right now, minus 125. 125. Okay, so becoming more juiced. Uh, but they are the favorite in game one, so that would make sense on why they are juiced like that. To, um, in the series, yeah, I think this is gonna be a battle back series. I mean, Scooball, I think the game that he's on the mound, that's the game that you really plan to bet the Tigers. Uh, I think well, that he, they are so confident with that man on the mound, uh, mm -hmm. and I rightfully so, but I. I don't have that much confidence in Tanner VB in round one. The Tigers, they haven't announced their pitcher, if I'm not mistaken. So it's going to be a bullpen game, right? I think one is Bybee. And then I think from there, for, they, they haven't for announced. Detroit. Oh, that, that they haven't announced. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and that. I think that's that's a, a positive for a lot of teams because if you don't have anyone you're very confident in, you're going to roll them out for one inning, two inning, you're rolling different arms out. That's going to be a beneficia beneficiary for the Detroit Tigers, I think. So. Again, they're another underdog, but Tanner Beebe is a guy that wouldn't strike me or scare me if I'm the Detroit Tigers. There's one overwhelming fact in this series that Detroit Tiger fans feel great about is that the way it ran with them sweeping and with the baseball doesn't want to go up against the NFL, so they're not playing on Sunday, the schedule allows Scooble to pitch on normal rest game two mm -hmm. and game five, and that just yeah. makes mm -hmm. them extremely live. Uh, unfortunately, the market between Detroit being – you know, so great in the final quarter of the season. And I'm sure the market recognizing that Scooble can pitch twice, it's taken all the value out of it yeah. because my first thought was like, this is a great bet. Detroit's going to be a dog, go take them. And, you know, it's almost like a pick them series, but that has to be reflective of Scooble being able to pitch twice. And also the Tigers, since the All Star break, the best ERA in baseball, and they're mm -hmm. going to need it. This is not a great offense. And this is a team that needs to win three, two games and, and four, three games. And they need AJ Hinch to be on point and they're going to have an opener, at least in one of these games, but it will ultimately come down to, I think it can Detroit score enough against Cleveland's got probably the best bullpen in the playoffs. Class A has had a wonderful season. They have guys in front of him who are fire breathers too. So um, it, it's going to come down to can Detroit score enough runs, but because Scooble pitches twice, I would not want to bet against Detroit. It's hard for me. I'm in Michigan. I'm emotionally invested in this team. As soon as the Red Sox become eliminated, Detroit becomes my priority. And I just, everybody in this area has just gotten swept up by how the team has played. They were sellers and under 500 at the trade deadline. It's just miraculous what they've done. Everybody knows they've been the best team in baseball since the middle of August. But um, Scooble pitching twice makes them extremely live against Cleveland and, and a team that they play. I think it helps also if they played Cleveland a lot. They're not afraid of Cleveland. It's it's a team. It's They're both from the Midwest. They play a lot in division. They're competitive in the regular season mm -hmm. with them. So I think Detroit can win. I'm a little disappointed the price wasn't better on them. Yeah, yeah you can get and, – and there is the same bet that we were talking about with the Yankees-Royals. It's plus 145 for this series to go five games. So if you really do think these two teams are evenly matched – 
and you think that, you know, because we know Scooble is going to pitch two and five, so we know he's not going to pitch, you know, one and four or anything like that. So even if you're saying, well, the Tigers will definitely win the Scooble games, that would still mean the series has to go five. So that's an interesting way to, to bet this if you wanted to put something on just like, I don't really know how it's going to shake out, but I know they're evenly matched. Um, and then, you know, also I'm seeing there's, you know, some decent bets on if you bet, you can bet the total runs in a series and you can also bet team total runs within the series. So mm -hmm. Scott just pointed out, you know, the the Tigers themselves and a lot of, you know, whatever this, the, the offenses in both of these Games are not going to um, really kind of put up huge like Yankee numbers, but like this, you can bet the Tigers under 15 runs in the series. You could bet the Tigers, you know, under 19 and a half. Like there, there are different ways you can bet this on DraftKings if you feel confident that like they're just not these games are going to be like three one two zero something like that. Like you can hit it in that way. Yeah, those are always good ways to. I actually had that up on my screen. I was going to bring that up, so it's crazy that you uh, you mentioned it. But I uh, try and find certain edges in in sports, and baseball is a little tougher. I think they're more correct, honestly. But when you look at these and add these lines up, because you said Cleveland's 16 and a half, Detroit is 15 and a half, uh, and their total line is 31 and a half. And it, for example, in the NFL, if you had a prop like that, they would juice that a little more, make it like 32 and a half or 33 and a half because they want people play overs more mm -hmm. uh, consistently in sports. So the fact that they're respecting the under in the series, I think that does mean that we're going to see a lot of lower scoring games here. And I mean, with the total sitting at seven for game one and scoop ball on the mound for game two, it makes a lot of sense that we're seeing potentially a five game series. These teams average maybe three runs per game. So yeah. uh, I'm with you there. I think that's a good way to uh, attack this market and this series in general too. Let's talk about the the AL team advancing to the World Series. I'll give you the odds for the four teams. Uh, Vaughn, you can let me know where where you would lean, and then Scott will will chat after that. Right now, the Yankees are the favorite, plus one thirty five to make the World Series. Guardians are plus three ten. Royals are plus three thirty, and then the Tigers are plus three fifty. You're still getting plus odds if you bet the Yankees. They, as we mentioned, are the overwhelming favorite. Do you think that that's the bet to make, Vaughn, or do you think there's another angle here? Your time to bet the New York Yankees have sailed, in my opinion. You should have bet them probably a long time ago. But if you like them now, I don't think you're gonna you're gonna love them later. Um, I like the Royals. I think the winner of this series probably is the best bet. Um, but from a betting perspective, I'll say this: if the Yankees win this series, their odds to win the AL now are going to be almost unbettable. Uh, so that's also why maybe if you haven't had the Yankees, you would think about getting them in your pocket. But I think the Royals are live, as you guys mentioned. Reagans and Lugo in games two and three. That's going to be a pitching advantage for them against Rodon and whether they throw out Luis Gill or Stroman or whoever they choose to throw out. So I think we could be looking at a Royals up two to one in this series. And I would not be surprised if they win game one. But for that price, I think Kansas City is a good bet still. Uh, but whoever wins the series is more than likely the AL representative in the World Series, in my opinion. Scott, what's your take? Can you can you bet anybody other than the Yankees or do you just think it's the Yankees to lose on the way? The, the price of the Yankees is bad, as Vaughn was talking about. I think you have to try to settle on one of the other three teams. And the good thing also about the Royals, is a five-game series, I think the Royals have a much better chance of, if you're an underdog in anything, you want the smallest sample. Like, if I'm going to have a shooting contest against Steph Curry, I might win if it's one shot. I have no chance mm -hmm. if it's 100 shots. Yeah. So the fact that this is a shorter series and the pitching lines up for the Royals, it gives them a puncher's chance. And the, the favorites are terrible. When the when the favorite is this public of a team, you're never going to get a good price. You know, it's it's like betting Duke basketball when they're the number one seed in the tournament or when Notre Dame's really good in college football or, you know, Alabama is always juiced to the to the moon. Georgia's like been like that for a few years. You, you don't want to bet favorites. Yeah. And I'll say this to getting the Detroit Tigers at this point in time at plus 350 isn't like a smart wager at all. Not saying that they're not going to represent the AL or win the AL. I just feel like, you know, if you were going to bet the Tigers and you saw this coming, this should have been a bet, a bet placed a month ago because you could have had them, you know, 15 to 1, 20 to 1, 30 to 1 at some places. Uh, so you always have to be cognizant of that too and not try and chase mm -hmm. a worse number than you could have had. I love bringing that up because sometimes it's like your rooting interest as a fan needs to be separate from your your bets. Yeah. That it's great to root for the Tigers and acknowledge they're still underdogs. And so them making the World Series would still be a major upset. But if you look at just the betting odds, it might not be an upset worth putting your money on because the, the risk reward for that is is not exactly where it is. Um, exactly. You know, you, you got to bet 
You got to bet with your head, not your emotions. Is our, and if our you're invested in a team, maybe it's just like, for example, if you're like me, you're in Michigan, you're invested emotionally in the Tigers. Maybe you just take them in the series and then you have a stake in every pitch of the series. But if it doesn't win, you've only lost that one bet that you've made that you haven't, you know, lost three bets in a row. You haven't chased. Well, they're down one nothing. They're definitely going to win with Scooble. Right. And maybe they don't hit that day. Now they're down another game. Now you're you always the key to handicapping and the key to placing any of these bets you want to be of emotional neutrality. You want to be mm -hmm. of a sound mind when you make these plays. And if, if you start changing your mind a lot and doing a lot of stuff, like in the NFL, right? The smartest thing you can do if you're going to play an NFL card is make all your bets in the morning. Don't do this while well, see how I'm doing in the middle of the day. I'll see how I'm doing before Sunday night football. Then you're going to make emotional decisions. Your emotional right. and rational minds are enemies. They do not get along. So I want you to make all your plays before we're in the middle of everything and, and you start having emotional feelings and reactions to stuff. That's when you make bad decisions, when you start chasing, when you start going outside the limits that you may have set for yourself when you were emotionally mm -hmm. neutral. So don't 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 make unless you're a pro at this, don't do stuff in the middle that you're emotional about. Try to decide what you're going to do beforehand and just sit back and watch it play out. And if you're a cynical, emotional fan like me, mm. because the the Bills and the Knicks have uh, ruined I, your fandom for so saying. long, you bet against your own team. You bet, you bet against your own team. Just uh, yeah, a small yeah. little bet. I knew you were going a there. Small yeah. little ten dollars here, fifteen dollars there for your team to lose or for the other team to win. And then, if your team wins, you're elated. Hey. If your team doesn't, you got a little cash in your pocket. You know, just it just kind of softens the blow a little. Bit. I want to hear from anybody who had who who bet against the Brewers in Milwaukee and how they're feeling today because I'm sure they would burn that oh money God. to have the Brewers yeah. back in the playoffs. I mean, yeah, you you have to. I like I like what you said too, Eric. I mean, as someone who mentioned earlier, I went to six straight Pirates games and watched them go in six. You think I was betting the Pirates to win those games? <laughs> I wasn't going to the games just for fun either. Uh, I wanted to make some money, so yeah, I was you know. So as much as it hurts sometimes, you have to do that. And as a Steelers fan as well, you know, we make the playoffs. It's game over. A game's already set in stone. We lose. So, uh, yeah. You gotta be it kills me I haven't been to PNC yet. It looks like a beautiful park. It's a beautiful park. And they got some new hot dogs there, like a chili cheese. And they sprinkled uh, potatoes and some bacon and stuff. Oh, my God. I miss that place. I miss that place. Well, you get another chance. You get another chance. Next year. Um, we're going to, speaking of the NL, we're going to get into the NL right after this. Uh, but we're going to first talk about fantasy life. Plus you can dominate this NFL season with a fantasy life plus subscription, get weekly rankings, start set advice, DFS analysis, and betting tools. Use promo code season 20. That's the number 20 for 20% off. Go to fantasylife.com slash roto world to learn more. Um, Scott and I have talked about this resource just nonstop, um, how, how great it is while we are still on the topic fond of football. Um, I know you are a Steelers fan. I know that Steelers game is Sunday night. Yeah. Maybe you have a little, a little tip for people. You got anything that you you're thinking about playing for that Sunday night game? I actually did. Uh, I did play some bet for that game. Um, I wrote about it too on NBC's website, uh, NBC uh, Dak Prescott over 22 and a half completions. If you guys haven't noticed anything about Dallas Cowboys, they cannot run the football. Uh, they have one rush coming from a running back of 10-plus yards this year. That is the fewest in the NFL. Uh, so, you know, bringing Ezekiel Elliott back with CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott sounded like a good idea, Jerry Jones. But this isn't 2021. Those type of things don't work. So, uh, yeah, Dak Prescott's had 22 completions or more in three straight. Um, I think he goes over on Sunday Night Football. And Mike Pittsburgh, has, Pittsburgh has been the, um, the hardest – defense to get running back fantasy points against i know that fantasy stats versus real life stats aren't yeah. always apples to apples but in this case they i help. think it is they're yeah. not going to run the ball against pittsburgh i'm, I'm gonna take the deck prop that vaughn outlined as soon as we finish this show in fact i, I may do it if, if one of you guys we just talk for a few minutes i may do it right now yeah come on well Eric. actually you're, you're gonna have to wait because the first question is coming to you and then you can then you can <laughs> okay. that because okay well Right now, we, the Phillies are the second biggest favorite in this round of the playoffs. They're minus 185 to win the series against the Mets. Scott, do you believe the magic continues for the Mets, or is this the Phillies just too good? No, the, the Mets are a live dog here. Um, they're playing on house money, emotional money. You always wonder, you know, the teams that didn't play in the first round, is, does Russ creep in? I don't like the Philadelphia pitching had been the second half since the all-star break when the tigers had the best era in baseball the phillies era is 4.49 and this is a city that will turn on you the moment 
you know, the, the Phillies lose game one, the entire city will, will be like, I think playing at home might almost be a detriment. And I know they had what 54 wins at home in the regular season, something like that. They had a great home field advantage, but the Mets play there as a divisional opponent. They're not going to be swayed by that. I think you have to bet the Mets in this series. Yeah. I Ball, exactly. you agree? Yeah. I was going to say Zach Wheeler. It's like, it's exactly who you want uh, on game one at home. And it's an insane ballpark. Like going to a Phillies game is so much fun. And uh, it's because the fans are insane. They love their teams, but they also love to hate their teams too when everything goes south. So I agree. I mean, getting your it's team in the same division as you is not a situation you want. And I was going to say, you know, of the four teams that are favored in these series, I think it's very hard actually to to make a case for any of these four teams to go out there and win 3-0 uh, in the postseason. But I want to say the Phillies because I backed them in the preseason. But honestly – their, their pitching's great. Their hitting's great. I look at guys like Alec Baum, who maybe I would sprinkle on for, you know, most hits or most stolen bases outside of a Trey Turner. But the Mets have a good chance of anybody. If they didn't – I know it's, I guess, saying this is stupid. So, you know, if they didn't hit that home run, I wouldn't be more inclined to say they have the emotional advantage here going into Philadelphia because they wouldn't be in the playoffs if they didn't hit the home run. Uh, but I do think, like you said, Scott, let them – they feel every type of advantage right now going to Philly, a team they've played how many times and they see every year. This is a good situation for New York. So this is a series too. should go four or five games. Also remember just the way they, they got in the playoffs with that game on Monday. Yeah. Sometimes you just feel, you know, I don't everything's know, going in your favor. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you, know. you feel, you start to feel like you're a team of destiny. The one thing I'm, I am a little bit worried about with the Mets is Diaz in his last couple of appearances has thrown a ridiculous amount of pitches. And I just wonder if they're going to, ask him to get more than three outs in a spot. It's going to come back to bite them. He's, his command has not been great of late, but that's the type of thing that can change at a moment's notice. It can be a, you know, a mechanical tweak or something like that. But I think the Mets are going to win this series. I'd rather the Phillies win, but um, I think the Mets are going to win. Yeah, uh, I'd love to see it. Uh, but you got to talk about the difference between bet, you know, betting with heart and emotion. Another thing, if you think this game or the series might go, you know, four or five games, uh, over 35 and a half total runs is plus 165 right now. If these two teams play five games against each other, I, I think that gets, yeah. you know, shattered a little bit. That's that's a good um, point. Let's talk about the the NL West battle. Um, I had bet the Padres to make the World Series because the the val the depth of that rotation, which was hurt by the injury to Joe Musgrove, um, Vaughn. I'm curious if that injury changes how you're looking at this series a little bit. Not too much, to be honest with you. I think either way, this is going to be the one of the most difficult series to uh, to handicap, to talk about, to write about. Like to write about, actually, it might not be the most difficult because you have so much to talk about. I mean, these two teams uh, are arguably the most talented teams, probably, in my opinion. I mean, the Padres have been so, so good uh, down the stretch. You know, Jackson Merrill has been a, a huge part of that. I was joking with people the other day saying, you know, the only bets I'm going to give out in the entire postseason is Jackson Merrill unders. Uh, I would have lost already. Uh, you know, he came out firing. And this entire lineup, guys like Tatis, obviously, had the big home run. But um, these guys all have great values, I think, in the home run market the hitting market, whether they be backing them, they'll be playoff leaders. The Dodgers are a team, too, that they haven't lived up to their hyper potential over the last three, four, five years. Every year we have this type of um, hope for them. We expect them to do something in the playoffs, and they really just leave us leave us upset and feeling the exact same way. So, uh, I mean, Scott, do you feel any differently? Because I, I do think this is a spot, too, where it's another dog situation. San Diego can't win. I think the Padres are a very live dog. And my friend Joe Sheehan loves to say in the playoffs, ball go far, team go far. The team that out homers, <laughs> the team that out homers its opposition almost always advances season. in these games. So can the Padres hit more home runs than the Dodgers? And, and obviously you, you have to find a way to get Otani out or keep him in the ballpark because what, what he's done is just ridiculous. And you know, what what a month of September too. Do you, I don't know anybody in any fantasy league who finished lower than second with Shohei Otani. If you did, I want, I want to hear what your season was about and how it all went wrong because he's just been a cheat code. But I, I see a Padres lineup one through nine that's hard to pitch to that has a bunch of guys who can get hot and hit some home runs, and that's going to be what you need to do in this series. And the Dodgers, they had pitching coming out of their ears in the preseason. They were going to do load management, going to try to have a lot of these guys maybe peaking at the right time. And for different reasons, they don't really have the staff they want. Yeah. And I'm not even sure who Flaherty is right now. He's kind of been a little bit of a funk now. And we talk about 
in the NFL, right? When we're making survivor picks, and I know all of our survivor picks are losing, but one of my credos is you don't want that divisional game because they play twice a year. They 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 know what hotel they're staying at. They've been to the stadium before. There's familiarity there. And I'm sure the last thing the Dodgers wanted was to play the Padres because the Padres yeah. are not the Padres are one team that is not afraid of the yeah. Dodgers. They're not going to kiss the ring. They're not going. They they play with a swagger and a confidence that you need when you're taking a swing in a big team like like the LAD. So I think it's a five game series. I think it's definitely a series the Padres can win. I could only bet the Dodgers here. I'm sorry, and, the Padres. The Padres. Yeah, here. Padres. yeah and, it, and this is a situation too, like you mentioned, Flattery, but the pitching goes to the advantage of San Diego, does it not in the series? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I think and the, so. the hitting might as well. I mean, it, and another question for you: how many, how many intentional walks do we see for Otani and Judge in the postseason? Do we see this be a, a case, or do you guys think that it won't be a, a talked about at all? Because Otani could get walked a ton. Can we bet on that? I mean, you could bet on total walks if they get if they get intentionally walked. That's a walk. So like you win that bet. And I kind of think that if you're backing Judge or Otani, I mean, everyone's gonna be taking home runs. In the playoffs, and you know, we didn't see as many home runs probably the first uh, the wild cards as we wanted to. Uh, but I do think that I'd rather be playing walks for Judge and Otani than home runs on a daily basis. I also want to point out that since the all star break, and some people may laugh, say arbitrary endpoints, but just stay with me. Since the all star break, the Padres have a 3.38 ERA, it's the best in the National League, and the Dodgers have a 4.11 ERA, which is a uh, several teams down. So I don't know what the Dodgers pitching is right now. And even the bullpen, I, th I think Dave Roberts has kind of been the guy at the track who's just you know, picking through his tickets, trying to figure out which one is live. I, I don't know what relievers they really trust right now, their rotation and all that. I, I, I think the Padres are going to win. I feel pretty confident about that, actually. I felt more confident before the Musgrove injury, but I still feel a little confident in it. Uh, Vaughn, I'm curious, same thing, bets to make the World Series. Um, I know you had Phillies prior to you know the season or earlier on. They're just they're plus two twenty right now. The Mets mm -hmm. are the only team over plus three hundred to make the World Series. Do you see any bets here that you think are worth making on the NL side? Well, yes, yeah, like I said, the, the the Phillies were the uh, my strongest fill. I played them in a World Series straight forecast with the Royals because I like the chance the Yankees went down, so I took a stab on that. Um, but there's. There's so many ways to approach this field in general. Um, I think that if you're betting, uh, like I said, if you're betting these teams, I think you need to take a look at what could uh, their best players particularly do for you to get a better odds instead of betting those teams outright. Like I like the Mets at plus 950 may be tempting, but you can get, uh, you know, Pete Alonso to lead the postseason in home runs, for example, at 22 to one. Uh, he's already got a leg up now. Uh, so you could be looking at those type of legs, I think are much better odds, but. I like the Phillies. I like the Royals. And uh, I think that I'm getting talked into the Padres a little more by Scott and you, Eric. Uh, Scott, what is your, what's your World Series matchup? What's your World Series prediction? I know we picked the Phillies a couple weeks ago, but I'm on the Padres train. I'm going to pick the Padres two, over two, two. Um, AL Central team to be named later. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? It's it's I, I can't do that. It's it's Padres in Cleveland. I'm just afraid. Padres I talked about I talked about Sheehan ball go far, team go far, and I am going to bet the Tigers because of Scooble pitching twice. But I'm just afraid Detroit has such a gap in home runs that that's going to eventually they're going to lose. The pitching needs to be perfect to beat these teams. So I think they can beat Cleveland, but Cleveland's better than them. And I th actually think Cleveland would be a really good matchup to beat the Yankees anyway. So let's go Padres and Cleveland in the World Series. That'd be crazy. And Vaughn, where are you? Where are you going? Uh, I guess I have to stick with the uh, the Phillies versus the Royals. I mean, I hate it, but uh, we're gonna stick with it. What do you got, Eric? 1980 all over again. Uh, my heart, going. my heart wants uh, Guardians over Mets or Guardians against the Mets. Um, I can't root against the hometown team. I can't root against you know my buddy in in Cleveland. But that's what the heart wants. But I think we're gonna get. Um, I think we're gonna get Padres over Yankees. Is my call. Padres over Yankees. Yeah, the is, electric. Was that 1998 is, they played in the World Series? I don't know, Scott. You remember all this stuff. That's I can't come up with that off the top <laughs> of my head. <laughs> um, Vaughn, are you going to have uh, more betting content out for, for postseason stuff that people can find out, whether it's on Twitter or at NBC Sports? Yeah, we are going to be working on some uh, MLB bets. Uh, likely, like I said, I, don't know, I might break out the bus stop bets, some long shots for mm -hmm. uh, these these playoff games. Because, uh, like I said, I mean, they're just so much fun to watch. Playoff baseball says that intensity around it. And the, and the 
I'll say this, the umping in playoff baseball is so much better than regular season baseball. Uh, but every pitch has so much behind it. And uh, every 2-1 count, 3-1 count, 3-2 count, you could feel the intensity in the air. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to have to have something out on baseball for NBC because it's really so much fun to watch. You talked you talked about pitchers not going as long in the playoffs. Is there any other trend that you've noticed? Do teams steal less bases in the playoffs? Or is there any other kind of statistical trend? And I'm sure this is baked into the price, so maybe there's no value. But how – we yeah. know the, the the extra innings they won't have the ghost runner and all that when they get to that. But are there any other trends in the playoffs that you you've noticed that maybe we can apply? So I actually forgot to mention, um, and I, I thank you for that because I was going to say one of the playoff leader bets that if you actually do like the Yankees, you should probably get behind would be Chaz Gisel Jr. to be lead the league in stolen bases or playoffs in stolen bases. Uh, but certain players get brought in for certain situations. He's going to be a guy that's going to be running a lot, I think, when he gets on base. But yeah, every pitch and every situation is so much more critical. So in the third, fourth, or fifth inning, we might see guys stealing bases or lining up to try and steal more bases. So, yeah, I think that stealing bases, stolen bases is a prop particularly that you could probably try and target more in the postseason on certain players rather than the regular season. Guys like Jazz, uh, Trey Turner, Shohei, I think they'll all be good. Uh, Garcia for Kansas City. Uh, Jose Ramirez stole way more bases this year than I thought he yeah. would. Uh, so maybe that's a guy for Cleveland, you know, you want to get involved, like, especially when Scooball's on the mound. You're going to have to try and steal some bases because of how good he is. So, uh, yeah, I like that call a lot. And Thanks the idea running. also in the playoffs that the fourth and fifth starters just don't exist anymore, right? That the schedule yeah. allows teams to be top heavy with their rotations. And, and then even we've seen what you know guys can throw on their off day, right? We saw how creative Milwaukee was with their bullpen yesterday mm -hmm. where they brought well, Peralta in for a really effective inning. So maybe that's going to come into play as well. Well, that's the thing, right? And then you'll get a sense of that if you, you know, following on Twitter or whatever. But like, you know, starting pitchers throw bullpen. They have bullpen days. And those bullpen days are usually the equivalent of, you know, two innings of pitches, whatever it is, depending on each team does it a little differently. Mm -hmm. So you will see some teams in the playoffs that are like, well, I'm not going to have you throw a bullpen for a start that we're not going to make if we don't win this game. So if you want to throw your one or two innings live, it's basically the equivalent. It gets the same thing out as doing the bullpen game. So that's another thing. You know, the Tigers are likely to do that. They don't have as many guys to do the bullpen game with. But, like, you might see the Padres do that to make up for not having Musgrove. You know, you might see some, like, you know, Dylan Cease live bullpen innings or Darvish or, or whatever it is or Michael King because he has thrown out of the bullpen for much of his career. Yeah. Man, was he was he shoving the other day? He just looked fantastic. So, I I wasn't sure what to make of him this season. He had that limited start run late last year, and he was one of the right answers for fantasy in 2024. And, and maybe he'll be one of the right postseason answers too. I will say I have an article coming out. I'm finalizing the list, but I'm going to do a, like a top 150 starting pitchers for 2025 uh, coming out in the next week or so. And Michael King right now is sitting inside my like right outside of my top ten. Oh, good. Man. Um, knocking on the door of top 10. So I think we're going to get a lot of Michael King next year as well. Yeah. From your typewriter, to God's ears. Let's, let's get Michael <laughs> King and, you know, SP one, SP two territory next year. I love yeah. it. Love that. Uh, Vaughn, tell people where they can find your work, where they can, if they're interested in your college football bets, all that kind of stuff, let just let them know what you're producing at this time of year and where they could find it. Yeah, it's a great time of year. I mean, we're getting all these sports in action, but uh, yeah, college football, NFL, um, we'll do a little bit of baseball. And then of course, NBA and college basketball start back up. Uh, in the next month to six weeks, so four to six weeks. So a lot of content coming out, a lot of work to be done. And I know as you guys uh, probably going to enjoy this season more than any. So, uh, yeah, best of luck with whatever you do with baseball. It's going to be fun. Thank you. Yeah, well, we are going to keep going on the Road World Baseball Show. Uh, you know, we're not going to be every single week like we are in the regular season, but we've got a lot of content coming your way, uh, including our next episode is going to be a, a draft of the first, well, maybe go two rounds of the 2025 fantasy baseball season. Uh, we're going to do it on the air. We're going to see where people land, you know, line up. Um, so st uh, stick around with us for that. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Samsky NYC and Scott is at Scott underscore Pianowski. Uh, Vaughn, what's your uh, Twitter handle again? V money sports, baby. No baby. Just V money sports. <laughs> v money sports. Uh, you can say the baby part in your head. V money sports. Make <laughs> sure you check Vaughn out there. Uh, I do that every Saturday morning for my college football bets. Um, so make sure you go there and then we'll see you on the next episode of the Roto World Baseball Show.